the new people that just hopped in. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, welcome. So today we're going to be talking about um, CSAR activity exemplars. So by no means are these activities 100% uh, perfect, um, but they do have some neat things that I wanted to share with you to maybe get your creative juices flowing so that when you are creating your own activities for your students, you have some, some ideas or a, a jumping off uh, point. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just... Um, here are some tips for creating great seesaw lessons. Uh, so the first one is making sure that you have clear directions. Uh, not only in the directions portion of seesaw, which uh, Jenny went over yesterday, uh, using those shortcut icons, and there is a link there to that document, but also making sure that you use that verbal direction feature or um, not only on the overview, but using the comment feature on each page to give verbal directions to your students as well. And with some of the new features coming out on Seesaw, uh, there's the caption option. You could also embed a video of yourself giving directions on each page. So I'm going to show you a couple of those, those options, but making sure that if your students are working independently, whether it's in the classroom or at home, that they have the information they need to be successful on those activities. Uh, also coming with clear directions is making sure that you're giving teacher examples when needed. Uh, the second tip is, and this is something that I absolutely love to do, it's personal preference, but giving them hints for what tools they're going to need to use. And I'll show you some examples, but there is a, a screenshot in here of how you can just make sure that it's very clear what tool they need to use to accomplish the activity. Also, uh, make sure that you keep it engaging. Uh, that could be embedding videos and links to your presentation or your, your activity, giving students choice. I'm gonna show you some examples of some choice boards. And then also having them use a variety of tools, uh, whether that's in one activity or if it's throughout the course of the week, getting them used to those things. And then the last tip that I'm going to give you for those great Seesaw lessons is to use the lock tool, right? When you're creating an activity, you have the option to lock in place certain items that you don't want the students to move. Or another great tip, again, like Jenny mentioned yesterday, is creating your template in a Google slide and then inserting that as an image so that your you can just quickly tweak if you need to do an additional activity or um, to just to make it easier on students uh, so that it's consistent across the board. So um, ways to spice up your activities. Uh, if you are a Bitmoji person, which our team is, is highly um, into Bitmojis, uh, use that and you can insert Bitmojis to, to spice it up. Uh, another great way if you don't necessarily feel comfortable sharing your face or doing a video of yourself, but students can still see you and, and be engaged. Uh, consider using other shapes or borders when you are creating activities. Um, Seesaw does have that library of shapes and um, text, but that doesn't mean you're limited to that. And I'm going to show you real quickly this example. Come on. Oh, that's not what I want. So this is just a, an example of a teacher who took this, um, you know, uh, an image that they found on the web of this um, photograph and they took different texts that they used, and they were able to spice it up in a different way. And let me um, just make sure I sign in real quickly so I can show you this. So again, um, they used uh, something completely different, not provided in Seesaw. They have different templates and backgrounds, different texts. And it really just makes it more engaging um, for your students. So don't feel like you're limited to what you, what you have available in your Seesaw tools. Go, go elsewhere. 
And then the last thing is again, um, Oh, interrupt for just a quick second. Yep. So on that seesaw page that you were just on, there was a play button there. Is that because the teacher has audio um, embedded in that that slide? Yes. Yes, that it, that that is why. Um, so this is just um, what what they have them do is the teacher is listening to the directions, or she she's having the students listen to the directions and then um, use tools to to re-record over her or right over her. So yeah, that's why the play feature is there. Um, but in this case, I just wanted you to kind of see the, the different options that you have available for, for templates or including images. Okay, and then the last thing again is consider using Google Slides, right? Create those fun backgrounds, those templates, um, so that you can easily reuse them moving forward. And um, you can do so many things in Google Slides and then bring them into Seesaw. They, they work nicely together. Now, Seesaw is, again, including a lot of new features, a lot of new tools that they hadn't previously had so that you don't have to rely on Google Slides. But um, uh, just keep that in mind that you, they, they pair well together. You, if you feel more comfortable creating things in Google, do it. Okay, so here's just an example that I made that I'll show you real quick. Um, so this is, um, again, you have access to all of these things. If you would like to use any of the ones I created, just be, be forewarned that my mini lessons are not actually mini lessons. So you are definitely going to want to re-record that, and I'll show you what, that, what I mean in a second. But here's a, a reading activity example. Um, so you'll notice that at the top, I have my um, teacher template. So this is what the students will be able to look at. They can watch my mini lesson by clicking the play button. And then they also have a link to a book on Epic. And then it tells them to complete their activity. So this is their instructions. This is the instructional portion of the activity. You'll also notice that I do include a template for them to edit. So I have both of those things in my activity. On the right-hand side, I have my student instructions. Again, watch the mini lesson, read the book about planets, and then complete the activity. I am using some of those tools, those icons, to help the students be aware of that. But some of the great things is when I am in this activity, um, a lot of people have been concerned about, you know, if they record a, a Loom video of them teaching, or maybe they have a video from um, a story um, storyline online, which is a great resource as well. But when you insert those videos, the the icon isn't of what they're actually talking about. So a workaround for that is you can take a screenshot of your video. Maybe it's your mini lesson or the book that you want students to listen to, and then use the link function to be able to link that. And I'll show you that. So if I go in to edit this activity, oh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my activities library so I'm not making multiple copies of this since I already have it. So um, if you have an activity that someone else created, but you want to edit it, again, this is just a good reminder. You can click the three dots on the activity, and then you can either copy and edit the activity yourself, or if it's something that you've created, you'll just have the edit activity feature. To get the copy and edit activity um, option, you do have to make sure that you have it hearted, um, that it's in your library. So... Um, again, here is my example that I have attached. You'll notice I took a screenshot of the book that I want students to read, and then I use this link feature. And the link feature is over here when you're doing the three dots. You now have a link option. So I can select anything. It can be text. It can be an image. In this case, I attach the link to the image, but then when I click on it, it opens up Epic for me and will take them directly to that book. Um, for your students, just so you're aware, 
uh, they might have to sign in to Epic once first, but after they sign in, it should remember. Um, so again, this is my, my mini lesson. They can just press play, they can click the link, and then we are going to actually do the activity as a student. And the template that I have for my students, you'll notice a couple of different things to make it engaging, right? So I have that use this tool, and this I include on all of my activities. I really enjoy this. Um, and to do this, I just simply use the text box, and then I took a screenshot of whatever tool I want them to use. So if I wanted them to use the pencil, I would select the pencil, and on your Mac, the shortcut is uh, Shift-Command-4, and then I can just take a screenshot of that and then insert it as an image. Um, again, you'll also know that I have my Bitmoji in there, right? I want to make sure that I'm engaging my students in fun and creative ways. And the reason I have that there is because I recorded uh, the instructions in the voice caption feature. And this is great because um, before Seesaw rolled out some of their new features, you couldn't record on each slide. So now I could record my mic on each, my, my instructions on each slide. But this is another way to get around that so you don't have that play button right in the middle of your student work. All they have to do is click on the caption below and you'll notice there's my voice captions. Hi class, what text feature is shown on this page? Click on the pen icon to circle the correct answer. So that's my voice captions. Again, it's there for them if they need it. Um, they don't have to listen to it, but I'm just reading and telling them exactly what to do. Um, if you have the multi-page feature because you are a Seesaw Ambassador or Seesaw for Schools, I can do the same thing on um, my second slide, right? I can click on the caption and I could record a voice caption going over the instructions for this page as well. Again, just another option uh, if you don't want to have that play button in the center of, you, of your um of your file. Another great reason to do voice captioning is because they can play it over and over again. Once students start editing, um, let's say you wanted them to record their own voice, they have to actually delete your recording and then re-record yourself. So another great reason to use voice captioning. Um, so that's just one example. Let's hop on back in. Um, now, we're going to talk about different types of activities on Seesaw, and the first one I want to talk about is a worksheet. Um, maybe not super engaging, but very practical. Uh, so Jenny did show you how to uh, put a worksheet in using the screenshot method onto a Seesaw activity. But here's a, a couple tips to make them exemplars, right? So one, make sure you do have those clear instructions. Um, if at all possible, make sure that if you have any mini lesson attached to it, that, that it's from you. So if you find an activity on Seesaw that is really great, perfect for your students, but maybe the voice um, instructions are this random teacher, re-record that, right? Copy and edit that activity and re-record it so that it's your voice that the students are hearing and not some random person that they don't know about. And then again, spice it up, right? So here's an example, a telling time example. And you'll notice it is simply just a worksheet, but I have included a mini lesson for my students to watch. Again, if you make a copy of this, it is not a mini lesson on telling time. It is just an example, so please replace that before you push it out to your students. But if I'm looking at the student template, But if I'm looking at the student template, you'll notice that I included, again, those helpful hints. What tools are you going to be using? And then again, if they need help, they can always click on the voice caption to either rehear instructions, or in this case, I think I'm directing them to the mini lesson again, right? So if you, you don't quite understand it, watch the mini lesson again. Okay. Um, also, choice boards. Choice boards are all over Seesaw. These are just some examples, some different examples of choice boards. Again, feel free to search the activity library. Seesaw um, ambassadors are the only ones who can submit activities to the Seesaw community library. And um, the Seesaw 
um, employees also do try to monitor that and make sure it's high quality activities that are available for you. Um, so these are just a couple examples. So this first one is a reading room and I thought this one was kind of cool. Um, I'm not going to actually click on it and save the activity, but you'll notice that this teacher created a Bitmoji classroom using Google Slides and then she has different links in there. So um, if you look very closely, there's different books on her bookshelf. Each of those books is then linked so that the students can listen to it. And again, you'll notice that her instructions, right? So she wants you to watch the video, um, the mini lesson, and then add a response. And then she's going to have you pick a, a story or two and respond that way. Again, if I were going to use something like this as an activity, you would obviously want to make it your own, right? You're going to want to put your own Bitmoji in there and then um, re-record those instructions for, for your students. Another activity of, of a choice board, a choice board activity, and this is a more um, straightforward choice board activity where um, the students are doing research on polar bears and they have a couple different options. In this case, it looks like the teacher actually wants them to click through each one of them. However, you could easily get rid of these arrows and have them say, you know, pick, pick three out of the six to research. Um, this Chris, he is a, a great resource. So if you are ever looking for some ideas, he's presented um, through Seesaw uh, nationally before. So he has a lot of great exemplar activities out there. And I'll show you a couple more from him as well. But you'll notice that again, when you click on these, this first one takes you to a book. Uh, the second one's a video. Then we have a polar bear camera. So using those links and embedding them into the activities is really keeping students engaged. Uh, two more examples of choice boards. Um, this one's very uh, straightforward, only two choices. Um, I selected this one because I wanted you to, to see that choice boards don't have to be super elaborate, right? They don't have to be like the Bitmoji classroom or having six different options. But even giving, giving students two different choices, whether it's listening to one song or another one, is totally okay. And this last one, um, and this is more of a choice activity versus a choice board. But I thought this was kind of cool, especially for those older students. Um, we always have teachers saying like, I would really like them to like do a writing prompt a day. Um, and this is just one example where the teacher is having them pick one of the, the images and then do a descriptive writing piece after it. So here's one example uh, of a commercial. So write a commercial. This one she wants them to write a persuasive, um, essay for their students. So all she did is put in different images and directions and have the students be able to view these as a choice board within Seesaw. Okay. And again, you have links to all of these. Um, I'm going to start moving a little bit quicker. We'll see about time. Um, this one is really cool. Uh, use Just getting creative with how you're using the Seesaw tools that are actually built in. And these are examples of scratch offs. So um, it can also give students choice. But what you do is, as, a, as an educator, you are creating a board and putting in shapes. And then the, the students are using the eraser feature to actually erase the inside of it. And I'll show you real quickly, because I have it in my account. And let's see if I can find the right one again. Oh, here it is. So what you would do as a teacher when you're creating it is you are going to um, put in the shape again and then just fill it in. And now as a student, I can use the eraser and I can erase and see what's inside. So just another cool way to engage students in a different way. So this is a scratch and read. Um, so they're going to use the record feature, unscratch a word, and then practice reading it. Another great example, there's some math ones here. Again, this one is from Chris, I believe. Yep. So again, you're, you're scratching off and then solving, revealing a math problem and solving it. Um, here's another scratch and solve um, for younger kids. 
Um, again, from Chris, but just different types of math problems. I believe these are multiplication. The other ones was division. And then the last one, if you want to get seasonal, this is using pumpkins. So again, you have a, a, a pumpkin um, template or image file that you want to use, and then they filled it in with orange. And again, using the eraser tool, you can um, scratch and read the, the sight words. Okay, here are some um, great math examples, different ways that you can use Seesaw activities. So um, a great thing about Seesaw is the ease of use for sorts, right? So you can create columns and then they can just click and drag all the items that you've provided from them. Like Jenny mentioned yesterday, there's no way to prevent them if you want them to do a sort from resizing the image. So you might see some younger kids accidentally resize it really big or really small. And there's nothing you can do about that, but it's still a, a great way to have them practice. I thought this one was cool because they're using everyday objects as a shape uh, sort. Obviously, the teacher went and got um, emojis and, and used those, but you could do that with anything. It could be images found on the web as well. Um, here's another one for um, a number a day. Again, this is using a template that was pre-created and then the teacher would push it out and just change the number every day. So a couple ideas there. And I know Jenny did share one yesterday as well, um, something similar to this. Here's one on circles. Again, this is from um, Chris that I mentioned who has some really great stuff on his page. And if you wanna see more from what one teacher has done, maybe you realize, oh, I've been taking a lot of activities from this one person. You can always click on their name once you're signed in, and it will take you to all of their activities that they have. But um, here's an example of a choice board where students are learning about circles. So again, here's the instructional piece, the, the teacher ex example, so to say, and then here's the template that the students would be answering. Um, if you're starting to think about older kids, so here again is an example of multiplication, right? So different types of activities um, that they would either watch or then complete. And then um, they'll have a template to do as well. And then this last one is using um, a seesaw background feature, feature. So when you are building activities, in addition to all the different shapes you have, you do also, you can insert backgrounds, whether it's a color or, um, you know, this one is a grid background, so the teacher inserted the grid background, created shapes, and then is having students use the, the grids to find the area and perimeter of each shape. Okay, um, here's some reading examples. Oops. And I'm going to start with um, this one at the bottom, because this is actually one that I created. And I just wanted to show you, give you some ideas. Again, here is, um, I have a mini lesson talking about fluency. And if you were a teacher and you're going to be, you know, maybe teaching virtually for part of the year or even if the kids are in class, it's always okay to have those recorded mini lessons available to your students, whether they're in person with you or at home. Um, so again, this is just an example. So I recorded a mini lesson and I just used Seesaw. So Seesaw has that record feature available to you and I just recorded myself. Again, this is not a full mini lesson on, um, on fluency. But then on the template, I have students then listening to me read the book and then they are going to re-record their voice reading it as well as a fluency practice. So again, I have my um, I have my notes. I have my little Bitmoji finger pointing actually to the caption one because if they play the caption, they'll hear me reading the page, and then they can filter through. And again, I took this from Epic. What I did is instead of directing them to Epic, I took screen screenshots of the page. Um, do note that I did give credit to Epic in my in my notes. And I also am I'm not going to be sharing this publicly, right? This is not something that I'm going to submit to the Seesaw Community Library. It's just for my own kids to use. Um, so just be aware of some of that with copyright. But then they can press play, listen to me read the story. Abby, 
called her mom. Where are you? And then the goal would be for them to practice their fluency by re recording their voice read the book as well. Um, I'll work my way up since we started at the bottom. Here is one for um, older kids if you wanted them to do a book review. I thought this was a great um, template for you to take it and make it your own uh, for students on Seesaw. This is also um, an example of how you can incorporate a read aloud. So this teacher recorded herself reading Jabari Jumps. Um, she used uh, a, a outside platform and you can see her reading the book and turning the pages if you click this link. And then she has a template that the students are to follow. So another thing that you can definitely do is, you know, record yourself reading and then have students do templates as well. And then this last one is comparing stories. This is again from um, Chris and he has two different stories that he's having students watch. One from the perspective of the billy goats and one from the troll that lives under the bridge. And then he's doing a compare and contrast. Another, another way to kind of do a similar um, guided activity. Okay. Um, so I did want to make sure that specialists were also included because there is um, resources available on Seesaw as well. So here are just a couple examples. I'm not going to click through all of them because we're running short on time. But I do have, you know, if you are looking to do some, some um, PE activities or healthy eating or music, you can always search the Seesaw Library to get ideas um, because you can sort it by subject area, right? So you can select your grade, your subject area, and they'll filter everything out for you. I also wanted to make you think about, okay, so Seesaw is going to be your learning hub for your students, right? You're gonna push everything out on Seesaw most likely, whether it's assignments or maybe announcements to parents or so forth. But you can also use Seesaw to link to, out, to other resources, right? So there's an example I have of a teacher linking to a breakout if they're using breakout edu. And then here's another example to um, TED ED. Um, and, um, this would be where they would go watch a video and then do some things on a different site. But I wanted you to consider, okay, well maybe use it for Mayan, right? Link to a Mayan activity or link to a Math Seeds activity or Reading A to Z or Pathblaze or anything, but have that use Seesaw as a way to push that out to your students so that they know I always go to Seesaw and then I can click on Pathblazer and do that assignment and it brings me to that, that website. Um, also here, especially if you have real young kids who are going to be using Seesaw, I highly recommend that you do um, tool practice at the beginning of the school year, whether it's that first week. And I do have some sample lessons here um, that walk you through the tools. Now these were created in the spring before their, the new tools rolled out on Seesaw, so you might want to do some updating. I just haven't gotten around to it. But when you click on the lesson, it really walks students through, okay, we're going to practice using the, the pointer tool for clicking and dragging. And there's multiple pages on each of them. So you'll notice that this first lesson, it talks about using um, the click feature, the pencil, and the pen. And then if you were to click on activity two or lesson two, it's going to have you work on using the eraser and the highlighter and doing different types of activities. So those are all available to you if you want to use them with your students. And then lastly, um, I do want to make you aware that we have a lot of great videos on our instructional technology website. It is linked here. Um, so if you've missed any Seesaw, Seesaw sessions or have questions, that's a great resource. But Seesaw also does have a teacher center, which again is linked here if you're interested. You can go out there. They have a ton of PD offered for teachers all the time. Um, they have a series called PD, uh, PD and PJs. They now have um, additional courses that you can work through that are free that will help you become a great Seesaw user. And that is all I have for you today. So um, we're right on time, but if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or put them in the chat. And I will remain on until everyone's questions have been answered. Thanks for being here today.